you've given us an introduction to YOLO. What has happened since? Because I think the original YOLO architecture you said was like 2016. And so yeah, since yeah. then, there's been a bunch of different versions. There's like YOLO version two and YOLO version three. Yeah. Um, and I don't know if those were like incremental changes, but ultimately it leads to what Desi's been up to. And just uh, this year made a big splash with the release of this YOLO NAS architecture. So like take us on the journey to YOLO NAS. Yeah. So yeah, the the first YOLO, YOLO V1, like the, the paper was published 2015. It was presented at CVPR 2016. So it's, you know, it's been around for a while. Uh, and since then, it's been 16 different <laughs> YOLO uh, oh. models have been released. Uh, there's this really, really good paper on Archive called A Comprehensive Review of YOLO that goes from YOLO V1 and beyond uh, by Juan uh, Tervin and Diana Cordova Esperanza. Um, and they recently just updated it a few days ago to include Yolo and Ass on it as well. Um, 35 page research paper, um, but I summarized their findings in a edition of the Deep Learning Daily uh, newsletter. Um, but yeah, like th there's been a bunch of Yolos and you know, what characterizes all of them is just speed and accuracy. Um, so, you know, the first three Yolos, Yolo V1, Yolo V2, Yolo V3, uh, these were all created by somebody named Joseph Redman. And uh, mm -hmm. Ali Faradi, I believe his name is. Um, these are the original creators of, of YOLO. Um, Redmond left uh, computer vision research for, you know, ethical um, after YOLO V3. Um, but people have kind of just adopted that name uh, as, you know, as, as a framework. There's, there's this brand affinity with, with the YOLO name. Um, Did and you say, no so I don't... I don't. I don't yeah. know if it was just like a like a glitch in the recording or what. But just as you were saying, why Joseph Redman left? Did you say for ethical reasons? Yeah, for ethical reasons, he was not. Um, he, he was not happy about the application of his research for military purposes. Um, and uh, you, know, you can obviously envision the military purposes that somebody would use object detection to target things and. Yeah, up, yeah, right. Yeah, there's um, stuff so, like okay, yeah. like detect, you know, what kind of plane this is. Oh, it's uh, yeah. it's a passenger airplane versus it's a Russian MiG, and yeah, yeah, and then it can be used to, yeah. I yeah. I don't know the extent to which they are like automated systems in terms of like actually firing it or if there's a human in the loop, but obviously, yeah, there's some pretty concerning ethical implications. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so he he left computer vision research, and then somebody named uh, Alexei uh, Bok I can't say his last name uh, Bokoshivsky. Uh, he started off with Yolo V4, um, and so Yolo V4 hit the ground. Um, and uh, after Yolo V4, it was Yolo V5. Um, so so okay, so Yolo V3 was originally I think it was like in the darknet framework for C plus plus, but then uh, an engineer named Glenn Jocker took Yolo V3, ported it over to PyTorch. So it became available to the PyTorch community. Uh, so then uh, Glenn then created Yolo V5. Um, you know, it's completely new architecture. I released it at, oh. at, uh, in, in, you know, as a PyTorch kind of model. Um, there's a bunch of car controversy about that. Don't want to delve into that too much. Um, but yeah, since then, there's been a number of YOLOs, like scaled YOLO, YOLO R, you only learn one representation, uh, YOLO X, which is exceeding YOLO series in 2021. Um, there's the YOLOs that came out of uh, the Paddle Paddle research group in China. Um, then, you know, Glenn and Ultralytics published YOLO V8 uh, earlier in 2023, January 2023. Um, but really, like, you know, the the... Prior to Yellow and Ask, the real state of the arts was Yellow V6, Yellow V7, and Yellow V8, right? So um, our model was inspired by Yellow V6 and Yellow V8, some of the blocks that they had in there. Um, we kind of fed that to our neural architecture search algorithm and ended up with Yellow and Ask. So what is Yellow and Ask? Yellow and Ask is, in a nutshell, it's an object detection model, uh, a new state of the art. And it's outperforming yellow V6 and yellow V8 in terms of mean average precision and inference latency. Um, so that means it's more accurate and it's faster. And it's improving upon um, some of the limitations of the previous YOLOs. Um, you know, it, it, previous YOLOs didn't really have adequate quantization support. Um, you know, the trade off between accuracy and latency wasn't the best. Uh, and 
you know, we're able to now be faster in real time detection as well. Um, not only that, Yolo NAS is, you know, supports intake quantization. Um, so it's just the natural next step. And it's, you know, it's not going to remain state of the art forever. Like object detection is a super competitive, like field of mm -hmm. research. There's people around the world mm -hmm. working on this. Um, you know, I'm sure somebody will beat us soon enough, but you know, we'll be, we'll that's be right why, back at it. That's why it was so yeah. urgent that I get you on the show now. <laughs> I need this episode <laughs> yeah. to be live while you guys yeah. are still the number one object detection algorithm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. um, so yeah, so super cool. So Yolanaz is the fastest, most accurate object detection algorithm yet. Awesome that you're saying that that means it's so fast now that it can be used in kind of real time applications. Um, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I think a key thing here is we know YOLO stands for you only look once, but what does the NAS NAS stand for in YOLO NAS? Yeah. So that stands for neural architecture search um, because the way this this uh, architecture was discovered was through this, uh, you know, tech, auto ML kind of technology called neural architecture search. Uh, typically, you know, people discover architectures, they're doing tons of research and all that. Well, we just uh, looked at what was out there, what worked, input that into our giant auto NAC engine and got this architecture. Um, so let's just kind of talk a little bit more about neural architecture search. So what is this thing trying to do, right? It's, it's trying to find like an optimal network architecture for a specific task. Like for example, that task could be detection, classification, segmentation, whatever. And what you know, neural architecture search does is that it's automatically searching through possible architectures. Um, so in the case of Yolo and Ass, like our architecture, uh, we search space, well, we'll talk about search space in a second here, but our architecture search space was 10 to the 14 different architectures. Um, so a ton of architectures. Yeah. So instead of like, you know, relying on manual trial and error or human intuition, <laughs> you know, NAS is is using optimization algorithms to find the architecture so that we're balancing accuracy, uh, flops, um, you know, floating point operations of so computational complexity and like the actual size of the model. Um, so, you know, how is it doing this? Well, you know, the, the search algorithm could be as simple as uh, grid search or random search, or it could be more complex like Bayesian genetic reinforcement learning. Um, but it's kind of just talk, talk about neural architecture search though. So we need, we need basically three things to make this happen, a search space, search strategy, and then some way to estimate the performance of the architecture that we end up with. So the search space itself, this defines all the possible sets of architectures that the, that our, our, our algorithm can explore. And so what's the search space consist of? It could be as simple as the number of layers in a network, or it could be as complex as the types of layers, the types of blocks, the connections between layers, various other hyperparameters. Um, you know, all the different, you imagine like, you know, you're building a Lego house, right? Like there's a myriad of different Lego pieces that we have, right? If you are trying to maximize the square footage of your Lego house by using the optimal uh, blocks, right? This is what neural architecture is kind of doing at a high level, like intuitively. We're trying to find the right blocks to maximize uh, something. Um, so at DESI, like the thing that we have, the auto NAC engine, it, it takes it just a step further because in addition to everything I mentioned before, we also consider the hardware uh, that you're deploying on and your data characteristics. Um, so the hardware could be, you know, in the case of Yellow and Ask, we optimize it for the T4 uh, GPU, which is industry standard for detection. Uh, you can even look at, you know, compilers, quantization as well. Um, but, you know, the, the, this search space is, it influences how the end architecture, you know, ends up being. Uh, so then we have the search space, but then now we need a way to search through this space because that's a ton of different pieces. Uh, and so again, you know, various methods, uh, random search, Bayesian search, reinforcement, learning, evolutionary algorithms, gradient methods, whatever. Uh, and this impacts uh, how long you're searching for. Um, once you got those in place, then you need to have like some way to estimate the performance of your, of your uh, out outcome architecture. And so this could be as simple as just training each architecture that you end up with on the data set that you're intending to use it for and just measuring the performance. Um, or you can do more advanced techniques that um, 
I really don't know how these work, but like curve extrapolation, one shot NAS, weight sharing, uh, things like that. Um, but you put all of that in, right? That That's what goes into NAS, the search uh, space, the search strategy, performance estimation strategy, and then the output is an architecture that's optimal or near op- optimal uh, according to whatever metric you have in a nutshell. Very cool. That was a great explanation. Uh, I love the Lego analogy. You are the king of analogies oh. uh, to make this, to take, yeah, difficult to visualize concepts and make them suddenly, instantly visualizable. So very cool. So all of this neural architecture search, all of this NAS uh, concept, this is something that Desi has developed, right? Yeah. So yeah, neural architecture search, it's it's uh, it's an active field of research. Uh, the thing that differentiates uh, Desi's neural architecture search is the actual algorithm itself. Um, so that's what what's proprietary for, for Desi is our algorithm got it, got for it, got it. neural architecture search. Yeah. So NAS is both like the name of a field of research as well as like in capital letters, a specific algorithm that Desi's developed. Yeah. In our case, we call it auto NAC, auto NAC, neural architecture construction. That way we can put the TM on there. (laughs) 